Mac Barron. Yes, Sam. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are my levels? Am I good? Um, yes, they're good. Do I need to speak quieter? <laughs> no, I, I speak louder, so if you could speak <clears throat> louder. Louder, so I need to speak like Sam. Yes. Okay. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, do you have any idea, any clue what we're going to do today? We're, you've told me that we're going to play, uh, Minecrafty. Yes. It's a very indie game mm. called Minecraft Xbox one edition because it's objectively the, ve- the best version. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. it's rather outdated. There's no more updates coming to this version of it. Um, and I decided it's, it's the, the simplest for you to, to learn to play. Um, <laughs> Because I'm video game impaired. Yeah. Have you ever played Minecraft? Uh, Like for five minutes. Mm. I mean, it's, Jude made me a long time ago. Uh-huh. Like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to put us both in a creative world. And then... I know the idea of Minecraft. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. like it's pretty high concept. You're in another world. There's been like three apocalypses. Uh-huh. And you have to defeat Moloch. Right, and and you have the squid powers. That was this, what this we're doing. No, that sounds like an awesome game, though, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, I like that. Here is your controller. Okay, I'm gonna put us in a creative world. First of all, What's there up? are like eight too many buttons on this controller. <laughs> what are you used to? Uh, a B, start select, and, and the keypad. No, it's, that's not true. It's I was 2023. A, I was a Sony man for a long time, uh-huh. so I'm used to this, the Sony controller. So this this mean, this thing means nothing to me. All right, this is a a world that I started a long time ago. A, a, a creative world where I just did random stuff. Are you on not it. gonna like introduce who I am, or are you gonna do that later? Well, I do that in the bio, like like below. Uh huh. Have you ever seen Joe Rogan? Any Joe Rogan interview ever? Uh, bits and pieces. Yeah. So, so he doesn't ever introduce who the person is. Really? Yeah. He just um in they the just start talking. Yeah, in the whole show notes of the episode, it's all about who they are and that kind of thing. Because everybody reads the show notes to Joe Rogan. Well, when you're scrolling through it, I would you can like see to know the like the percentage of Joe Rogan <laughs> viewers slash listeners that uh-huh. have actually read the show notes. Well, that's what I hold on. If you'll just press this button twice on the the hamburger uh, yes the hamburger okay and then just press bean see i know the lingo yeah b. um and let me make sure it'll wait do it again b or the hamburger the hamburger boom, boom. and then press a boom there you go all right i'm gonna change it settings oh it's syncing data i uh, see video Graphics. games used to you could like turn on the machine like you'd put the thing, the disc in the machine and turn it on. And then see, you'd, you'd play the game. <laughs> you wouldn't need the combined knowledge of human cooperation to to play the video. Like you don't need the end. You would, it wouldn't need the internet to play the game. Uh-huh. And those things, those times were better. <laughs> Back in my day. What are we? Oh, I can move. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're moving faster than I am, though. I am actually f- flying with an elytra. As well, you I'm can flying see. too. I don't see any legs. No, I'm no, no. I, I, I have this. I have th- these wings on. Oh, yeah so, yeah, yeah. so that makes me fly faster. Gotcha. Um, this is this is a creative world that I spent many, many, many hours on. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff. Um, when I played Skate Three with Mom, mm-hmm. I I ha- I was like, I'll, I'll I'm gonna teach you the controls. You She's just like, started out on Skate Three. Yeah. You didn't let her play Skate 1 or Skate 2? I mean, I've never played Skate 1 or Skate 2. I don't know how you people do this. <laughs> I'm a completist. Don't tell me there was a Minecraft that came before this one. <laughs> <laughs> there actually was. Oh, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we even doing here, Sam? <laughs> um, can I... Let me see. Where are you? The I am that... above the checkered... There's a checkered... Looks like like an end. I have not played on this world race in thingy. like three years. Okay, see the flames? See the flaming? There's like fire in the sky. Yes, yes. I am right. near that. Yes, I found you. Okay. Here you I've are. I've got a cape. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, that's not a cape? Those are wings. Oh. Um. So would you like me to like introduce you to the game and tell you sort of important things so you can play around and then we'll, we'll start talking about stuff? Sure. Okay. So 
LB and RB, these two buttons, um, sh move uh, your your hot bar. Those are the top finger buttons or the bottom finger button. Top finger buttons. Top finger buttons. Yes. What do those do? They they move you around the the hot bar. What is a hot bar? That bar with all the TNT. Ah, that yeah. is not what I imagine when you say hot bar. What What do you think? Let's not get into that right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So, and if, if you press X, <laughs> a public house that only allows attractive, good-looking women in it. Okay. Uh -huh. If you press or X, men. Go ahead. <laughs> X. What is X? See, X is I'm the, already, the button with the X on it. Doesn't make any. What? Why even design a controller like this? <laughs> A, B, X, Y. You I know have no there's idea. like 22 letters of the alphabet they left out there, right? <laughs> a, B, uh -huh. X, Y. So press X. And like, what? Oh, my brain does not work this but way, man. But you played the PlayStation 4. Well, yeah, but those are shapes. <laughs> press square. I don't I don't remember. I don't have... It's you don't... been a long time. Okay, X. 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 Yes. Okay. Gotcha. That, that opens the creative menu. So okay. these are all the blocks you can pick from. are like the toppy two. Yes. Okay. 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 That open. Oh. Okay. So like that opened my hot box. I mean my hot bar. The inventory. Creative the inventory. inventory. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. So these are all the blocks you can choose from, and then you can press the RB buttons to go to different sections. RBs are the top fingers. LB and RB. Yes. Top fingers. Okay. So so those the will different, show you different oh, the sections. tabs. Those yeah. are tabs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you have building blocks, decorations, redstone. We might get into that. Materials, food. Um, miscellaneous is fun too. So building blocks are th that's the first one. Yes. Then decorations because it looks like a picture hanging on the wall. Yes. And then railroad tracks and stones. Well, well, you see it says ra redstone oh, transportation. It does, it does say that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, now I can see that. Old age will get. To I'm you. not an idiot, Sam. <laughs> if you press X, <laughs> it totally didn't see the letters. <laughs> if you press X again, it gets rid of everything in your hotbar. Materials, foods, tools, weapons, and armor. Brewing miscellaneous. Okay. You better be glad you're not playing with Father Mendalis right now. <laughs> what would he do? He would spend the entire hour of your time trying to find the boundaries of what is possible. <laughs> like, not actually playing or talking to you. Uh -huh. He's like, can I combine this stone <laughs> with that decoration okay good can i combine the stone and the decoration with that material no okay can i combine the stone and decoration with material number two yes he would just do that the entire time the entire time it's minecraft I would, would actually be great for that uh he would love it yeah yeah well, yeah yeah i should get him on the podcast that would be great hey. well i would introduce to him first i know a guy you would introduce to him i would introduce <laughs> to him yes. i would introduce to him when i talk pretty one day yeah <laughs> So if you just want to grab a couple blocks. Oh, and you can go up and down? Yeah. Wait, wait. There's, oh, there's oh see, there's a right joystick on the controller. All right, so I'm going to grab a, a box. What? A any blocks, just press block. A on it to, to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And then you press B to leave the... How do I get down from here? Uh, you can Excuse me. push down. No Sorry, take your time. No okay. Fun fact. On the Never sneeze once. On the last episode, mm -hmm. I used mom's sneeze to sync the audio. Oh, boy. You could sync the audio here and on adjacent <laughs> planets with mom's sneeze. So if you go down, if you push mm. down on the right uh, joystick. Down on the right joystick. Yes. No, I'm looking down. Push it down. Oh, press the joystick. Press. Yes. Oh, ooh. Then you go down. How do I go back up? You uh, press A. That doesn't make any sense. Why? Why do that? It's okay. just it's just built like that. And then if you double click A, you I can... want it, Sam. I want it. Wait for it. I want this built different. <laughs> okay, what now? I, I, I'm hovering again. If you double press A, you'll you'll just start not flying, so you can just walk around. So so use the left joystick to walk, mm -hmm. and use the right joystick to look. Mm -hmm. And then if you double click A again, you'll start flying. And super complex, if you go up really high, and then you double-click A, and then click A once again, you'll start flying with the elytra. I think you... Oh, you're, you're doing it, yeah. I'm like a gliding, though. I'm not really flying. Am I? Oh, oh, I am going up. Yeah, it's, oh, a, it's okay. a glider. It, uh, if you... um. So will I actually gain altitude or not? If you press A while you're gliding, you can gain altitude. Uh, files are in the computer. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know what this is, but it kind of looks like an Among Us character. I think it's an A, actually. Um. All right. You you got the hang of it. You think you can can build some stuff? Oh, I could build anything. <laughs> all right. Um. So like my so confidence, don't you? <laughs> so just go to any part of the map. Okay. And then just preferably places with stuff in it. Cause, cause you know, you okay, got how do I go. stop moving forward? Um, uh, you can double click a again oh. and you're on the ground. Now, I'm on the ground. So. I'm good. All right. Here I am at a spot. Yes. So I... you can look down and uh -huh. the, the left, uh, trigger mm -hmm. places blocks. Bam. Oh. That's, that's the right trigger. <laughs> and that, that breaks blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my, I just wanted a place to put the box. Duh. I'm yeah. not an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, so the right trigger breaks and the left trigger breaks places why would i want to break the box that i just put here uh, the block the block yeah. well if you misplace that block uh -huh. then like but now i don't have a block do what? i have an infinite number of blocks yes in creative mode you do oh so we're in creative mode that's why we can fly so creative i know right the the first time ben and i ever played creative mode we were like this unlocks a whole new level and then about five minutes in, you get really bored. But um, as you can see, I, I, I've had a lot of uh, had a lot of fun on this world. Um, some some notable things are this advent calendar that I made for me and Jude. That every day you would open up a um, a door. See, it, it closes, and then it. I don't know where you're talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then. This battle I had with these two mechs. This is this is one Ben built, and this is one one I built. How um, come you're moving? Do I can I not move as fast as you? I if you do the wing thing. No, if you push forward on the left joystick, uh -huh. like double push, uh -huh. then you'll sprint in the air. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Bam. Um, um, come back around. <laughs> It's a lot of half-built structures around here. Well, no, it's not that they're half-built. It's that they were built, and then they got what's called griefed, where somebody came into the world for the sole purpose of destroying what was already built. Was that someone named Jude? No, actually. Okay. Surprisingly. Um, if you'll go to the giant, weird-looking house... Up in the sky? Um, well, okay, one, your description does not necessarily narrow the down left. any structures in this place. To the, to the left, the big, big thing. To the right now. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And if you go all the way to the top, to the very top. Mm -hmm. All the way up. You see where I am right here? Mm -hmm. Just come to me. This is really good for the, the audio listeners, by the way. Did you, did you listen to the episode of the Unmade podcast where they, um, the... They were in the, like, a hot air balloon? No, one of them tried to, tried to recreate KFC chicken. Oh, no, I didn't. I immediately turned it off. Like, I listened to it for, like, 45 seconds. Uh -huh. I was like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> go ahead. That's what people are doing right now. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so if you'll go down in this hole. I'm going you know, down in the hole, everyone. Yes. Here I am. Um, you so if you put, walk, like, a fireman's pole in there. That'd be fun. If you walk through the doors, they'll they'll open automatically. Okay. Because pressure like plate. Like all doors should. Yep. Um, and if you'll notice, there there are a few doors here. Um, but you see the room, you know, generally mm -hmm. it, you, how dare you? How dare you? I just, dude, I needed a hole there. No, nope. you know, I gotta be free. <laughs> this is what happened. Okay. Come back. Come back. Um, <laughs> you could just rebuild. How'd you get a block that fast? So if you, if you press up on the D pad while you're looking at a block, it gives you that block. Shut up. I know. Right. What about like books. Will it give me books? Press up. up on the D pad. Yep. Does this thing right here? Yep. Boy, you tripping. Um, I don't know. Maybe your controller's not set for that. Anyway. Oh, um, oh you got it. How'd you do that? I pressed around. No, I, I <laughs> well, I you already have the block, so it's not going to give it to you again. Oh, it's a good point. Good point. All right. Okay. So come. On. Oh, it's sideways. Mine's set up left. Left D-pad. Oh, weird. Again, fascinating for the listeners. Yes. Super fascinating. So we're we gonna play this. We're we gonna talk about stuff. What are we gonna do? You want to show me something? Yes. So jump down in that hole. This, this scenario has gotten me in trouble in real life so many times. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. And if you look around, 
It it used to be. At one point, it used to be a giant version of the room you were just in. Except with, like, a dude standing in the middle? Whoa! Yeah. And, okay. and you fell down a hole. But it was so dark that I, I had to... fly, so screw you, hole. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put cobblestone, or not cobblestone, glowstone everywhere. Okay, to, I used to, to know how to fly. All right. <laughs> Double tap the A, right? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, anyway, you can just explore, build, or whatever, and we'll, we'll talk. There's some, some DeLoreans I made. If you look up at my screen, mm -hmm. there's some DeLoreans I made. This is the flying one. And then this is, this is one going going through time. <clears throat> anyway oh i see the like the tire tracks yeah the, the fiery tire tracks nice no. touch and that's like a, a an empty delorean right there this one yeah uh yeah i guess and you can even huh, this is the fun part you can sit in it does it go sadly no can you make things that go like that no because in this version you don't have command blocks no because all the tires are blocks <laughs> So it goes, but it's a very bumpy ride. Pretty it overrides much. your graphics card <laughs> real fast. Kadoom, 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 kadoom. Um, so you can you can just run around, build stuff, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. What's just up? for a second. Let's, yeah. Let's talk about the real world. Okay. Uh, we had some severe weather that rolled through like an hour and a half ago. Uh-huh. And that's a, it rolled through, right? So it, what it has left is enough cloud cover, cover and like particles in the atmosphere. And right now it's sunset. And so it is gorgeous outside. And we're playing Minecraft. Like somebody needs to be walking the dogs outside right now. Yeah, I wonder. I don't want to point anybody out, but his name is rhymes with blued. And gooed. And gooed. And chewed. And chewed, yep. Good hey, Jude, yeah. will you go take the dogs? We're just talking. Okay, let's let's continue. All right. You started your podcast, Catholic in a Small Town. When I was 18 months old. Yes. What, this is true. What compelled you to do that? Okay, so a couple of things. Um, one, I, I found podcasts interesting, unlike this hole that I've fallen down in. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. Double tap Double A. tap A. Hey, bam! Go. Now, I'm, am I flying? Am I going? Up? Okay. Um, yeah, so I found podcasts interesting. They had just hit... Um, what was this year? This is 2023. 2023. So you said what year did we start it? Uh, I guess 2003. 06. Oh, oh, 06, yes. Old. All right, so they had, podcast had become a thing like two years prior to that. Um, somebody will correct me and say, actually, there were three people that had podcasts five years before that, but nobody knew about them. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, people found out about them like a year and a half, two years before that. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe three. And... <clears throat> they became a thing like that. I, I I remember driving through Swainsboro, listening to an NPR story about podcasts. Mm. And so I did a quick search. Um, I became a Mac user in 03. And right around that time, it was within like a week of that, there was a podcast button or iTunes, maybe something was added to the, to the iOS. And um, so or rather, iTunes was already there, but the, um, the 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 podcast tab or something was added in iTunes. I was like, oh, okay, I can actually get this without having to go online and know what the heck an RSS feed was. Mm -hmm. So um, I started listening to them, and the first thing I looked for was Catholic. After I typed in boobs, I typed in Catholic. <laughs> I realized oh, this is an audio thing, so I'm, uh, nobody cares. <laughs> uh, but the second thing was Catholic, and uh -huh. uh, there's a couple of Catholic podcasters that I started to listen to, and they were immediately relatable, um, mostly funny, and um, or, or you know, like charming, not just deadbeat. Yeah, uh, without joy, and within a short period of time, I started thinking, you know, I could do this. I'm a funny guy. Um, but I don't want to do it by myself, and so I approached um, this pretty woman that lived in the home with me, uh, Catherine, <laughs> uh, about it. And she was like, well, I don't know about that. And we both grew up Protestant. And when you grow up Protestant, you grow up hearing all the time that you are supposed to spread the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, you hear the term evangelical, Protestant evangelicals. That's what evangelical literally means is you are spreading the gospel. So 
if you aren't doing that, you kind of have this like Protestant guilt in the back of your mind that mm. you're not doing enough to, mm. t- to tell people about Jesus. Uh, and so we, we thought, what would we do a show about? And at, we were very big on pop culture at the time. We loved movies. We loved TV. Um, not so much music, um, but we love visual stuff like that. And a little bit of video, video games. Um, and so we thought, well, we can do a show about that stuff, but that's ultimately meaningless. How about we talk about our faith? And our faith was important to us, mm-hmm. but like just important enough. Like, we weren't super Catholic back then. Ah, We were okay. Catholic. Yeah. We, were, we were proud of our Catholicism. We were both converts, and we came to the faith together in uh, 2000. But we we hadn't really had the experience of sharing that with others very much. And we were living in this tiny town with, like, four other Catholic people in this little podunk church. And so we decided to wrap that into the show. And what do we call it? Well, why don't we call it Catholic in a Small Town? And that would uh, that would prevent us from sort of peeling away from the important part of the show and just talk about movies and what's going on. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's sort of why we started in a nutshell. One, the um, infrastructure became available to everyone, and two, it, the opportunity costs to get into it were, were very low. Mm-hmm. And three, we wanted to talk about our faith um, more, and we did, and it's been great. So, does that answer your question? It does. Okay. It does. All right. Um, did Mom say the same thing? Well, I didn't actually talk to her about that. Good call. Good yeah, call. I, I talked to her about menstruation her con- and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, about her conversion to Catholicism. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, but that's that's pretty much it um, as far as that whole thing. We didn't actually touch on the podcast. I don't think at all. Um, am I gonna find anything down here? Is it no? Is all like pretty it's standard? yeah, it's it's nothing. I'm just I'm tearing up the ground, everybody. I'm like a ground <laughs> tearing up machine. You couldn't tear up more ground on the tearing up this ground this day of the year if you had an electrified ground tearing up machine. That's what I'm saying. Straight up. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Um, I am not gonna be able to get out of here. You're you're friends with uh. Greg and Jennifer Willits. Yeah, of, of Adventures in a Perfect Living. Of Adventures in a Perfect Living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah how, sure. how did how did you meet them? Okay, they were like the, I think, second podcast I ever listened to. Mm. So um, I'm trying to fly. Hold A. I, hold on. Don't tell me what to do. <sighs> I'm holding A. What? Well, oh, you're you're sort of, okay, so move slightly. Oh, it, there oh you go. okay. Perfect. Um, how did we meet them? They were the second podcast I ever listened to, and they immediately became like my favorite podcast. It was called Rosary Army at the time. I uh, even remember the topic that they talked about on the very first episode of Listen. I remember where I was sitting listening to them. I remember the room I was in in Swainsboro High School. It's crazy how that how the mind works, isn't it? Yeah. All right, and. That was approaching the summertime. Maybe that was the spring that year. Mm. And I was doing an awful lot of work. I was rebuilding our porch at the time that summer. And we had this, we owned a lovely home um, in Swainsboro uh, that was really old. It was built in like 27 or 28. And it had these, like these side areas on the house that were open. And somebody had screened in long ago. And the wood had had pretty much rotted out. So I was redoing all the screen and all the wood um, um, encasements of that screen mm. that summer. And it was an awful lot of time of me sitting on the porch. And they didn't, you didn't have digital players like you do now. And so, and I didn't have a computer out there. And podcasts were online, so I was downloading like ten episodes of a podcast onto um, a DVD draw or CDs. Uh huh. And then taking them out there and then listening to them all day <laughs> on a CD player uh-huh. So I, while I was rebuilding the porch. And as we were, um, as I was rebuilding that, they started talking about this, this Atlanta. We were in South Georgia at the time, but Georgia for the last 15 years or so has done, or longer than that, I guess, 25 years, has had this um, big Catholic convention called the Eucharistic Congress. Oh, I can now teleport. You can now teleport. I just got a message. I, I did that. How do you teleport? That's a great question. 
Do you uh, hit like all the buttons at once? Uh, that works in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't want to fatality you. Am I going to fatality you if I hit all the buttons at once? No, actually. Get over oh, here! Wait. Teleport. No, teleport to me. Okay. Oh, are we making out? What's going on? You're here. Okay. okay. Uh, turn around for a second. You see that wall right there? Yeah. It is no longer a wall. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> that is that is called a a three by three piston door. Wait, wait. Let's put it back. Put it back for a second. Uh, just flip the lever under you. Under me? What? That's a stupid place for a lever. Okay. How do I do that? Left click. Uh, oh. left trigger. Left trigger. That that was the right trigger, actually. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, forty six year old father <laughs> does not know the difference between right and left. I do. My brain's just wired wrong. Okay. Left. Bam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, do I get it to disappear by hitting it again? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. I have to say something first. There's a wall in my way. There. It was supposed to be there's a door in my way. I ruined that. All right. Go yeah. ahead. Um. All right. What were we talking about? Um. Greg and Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we uh, <clears throat> the Eucharistic Congress is happening, and as the Eucharistic Congress was approaching, Greg and Jennifer, who had joined forces with a priest in the Netherlands named Father Roderick van Hugen, had started together a podcast production network called SQPN. Whoa! And since Greg and Jennifer were right outside of Atlanta, and they ran an apostolate called Rosary Army, where they made and gave away all twine knotted rosaries. They were going to have a presence at Eucharistic Congress, and they decided to have Father Roderick over. And so Father Roderick was going to be there, and um, Greg and Jennifer were going to be there. And it's in Atlanta, which is was like three and a half hours away. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know what? Why not? So what podcasting at that time kind of represented to me, this is before we started our show, mm. was um, like this, this doorway to a bigger world of Catholics that we just were not a part of ah. because we were in such a tiny town. Yeah. And so it automatically starts deepening your faith and makes you feel like you're more part of the team. And uh, it was it was wonderful. And so I thought, well, I, I need to go meet these people. And so I went to the Eucharistic Congress by myself and met Greg. Uh, they had like a re little recording session, little recording booth set up. Hold on one second. It's time to pray the Angelus. Time to pray the Angelus. Word? Word. <laughs> okay, Google, stop. It, it, won't, it won't stop. It, it won't stop. Anyway, uh, so I went, we met, and the, somewhere there's actually a recording of Greg sitting down with me for the first time, asking me to introduce myself. Really? And I have a total fake radio voice. I'm like, well, I'm Mac Barron, and, you know, uh, the iPod, or the, the iMac had this podcasting button, and I just thought, <laughs> why not do that? How about that? Why not listen to those? <laughs> anyway, it's ridiculous. It sounds... So stupid. Uh -huh. But uh, I got, I met them. I met Father Roderick. We started emailing back and forth a little bit about how I wanted to start a show. And um, we used the iMac at the time to record the first, I don't know, 10 episodes or something. Greg reached back out to me and said they're looking, they were looking for new shows to kind of take on to SQPN. And they would be willing to um, purchase some equipment for us. Awesome. And so they did. They purchased our first nice microphones and um, I think a piece of software at the time that we would use to record. <clears throat> and so we started our show from there and we worked off that stuff for the first couple hundred episodes. So that's sort of how we met them and how we started the show. Mm -hmm. um, we would obviously communicate back and forth. Um, they brought us on as one of the SQPN shows, and so that was cool to be a part of that. And then eventually we were on the board of SQPN, and we started actually meeting. We They invited us up to meet them for like a business dinner kind of thing, and we mm -hmm. did. And that was cool. Um, so we started when we both had these sort of young families, and so our family started hanging out a couple of times a year. They SQPN that year had like this... Um, this New Year's Fun Drive Marathon, and they were inviting as many podcasters as possible to come be a part of the marathon, and it ended up being this big party at Greg and Jennifer's house for New Year's. Nice. And so that began what has become our tradition of spending New Year's with the Willits. Oh, interesting. That's how it started. Wait, what was the marathon? It was a like a live stream. It was ah. a, it was a, a SQPN mm -hmm. um, Catholic podcasting live stream. 
Interesting. To try to raise money for yeah, SPPN. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. And we, I don't think we've missed a New Year's since then. That was probably 2006, 2007. Greg is losing his mind if he's listening to this right now because he <laughs> knows dates like nobody's business. Uh-huh. So we've spent every New Year's with the Willets, even when they moved to Colorado, um, when they moved to, um, what's that other place? Indiana. Mm-hmm. And obviously when they moved back here. They're like, you can't get rid of those people. We've tried. I, I know. So many it's times. That's so. It's incredible. Um, Next question. I'm actually going to walk around now. Okay. It's hard for me to talk and do this at the same time. Yeah. You're actually worse than mom is, surprisingly. Well, mom was riding a freaking skateboard. That's true. What do you have to do? Press forward? Come on. No, you have to like, you have to push I, A I a bunch of times. I played the game, Sam. All right. All right, then. Ooh. Heads I can destroy. Are these pokey pokeballs? Yes, they are. I got super into Pokemon for like five minutes. Can I get rid of them? Sure. I have a copy of this world and um, Ooh. on the the new version of Minecraft. Um, would you want to now that you've seen Minecraft and experienced it uh-huh. after the break in the show? Uh huh. And we're back once again. I did not check the time, and I had sort of faded out a little bit so sorry if that was a, a little bit of a not for you but for the listeners mm-hmm. if that was a bit of a rough transition now, it was abrupt for me too sam i'm a little triggered okay okay um so now that that dad has played some of what minecraft was in the past first of all before you move on yes got i'd like to say how impressed i am with your command of all this technology we're looking at we're looking at a lot of uh, human engineering <laughs> that and infrastructure that had to go into you doing what you were doing right now, uh-huh. and and you're you're managing it all. Well, well done, thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So this looks a little bit different than it it did. Mm-hmm. Um, that is because this is Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Mm-hmm. The the pre the s- sort of premiere. The newer version. Newer version, okay. So there were all these separate versions on like Pocket Edition, like phones and Xbox and PlayStation, that kind of thing. Then they made Bedrock Edition that you were able to play together. Mm. Like one person could be on PC, one could be on mobile, one could be on Xbox, and they could all play in the same world. But there's this handy thing called, um, I've already explained this to you, but there's this handy thing called Minecraft with RTX. Because Minecraft's lighting engine has not changed since, like, 05, not 05, but, like, 2010 or something like that. Um, right now, Greg's losing his mind. <laughs> Go ahead. But <laughs> but <laughs> ray tracing, which is RTX, is Minecraft with ray tracing, which is sort of simulates real world, real world light. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what? So there are, there are these, um, these worlds that let you sort of experience what RTX has to offer. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna have Dad run through those and sort of just walk around, play with it a little bit, see see how he um what he his opinion of it, and, and we'll we'll talk a little bit a little bit through that. Um, You're gonna talk me through it. I, I'm gonna emotionally it's like I'm landing a plane in the yeah, dark yeah, yeah. fog or something because it it is really it's uh mm-hmm. let me let me just get back to the start real fast. Should I close my eyes? Do you want me to close my eyes? Yes, yes, please. Okay, close please, my eyes. Close your eyes. Um, what's it, what was it like raising? It's just like our honeymoon. <laughs> Go ahead. What was it like raising? Except, except less technology. <laughs> <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What was it like raising four boys? Oh, I know that's a bit of a loaded question. It is. Well, and it is, and it's too dynamic of a question. Mm. There are too many facets. You want to me to that? sharpen it a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, First of all, way better than raising four girls. But go ahead. <laughs> Would you have rather had one girl at least? See, that's tough because there there's nothing that I would have changed because I feel so blessed and have enjoyed my life so much. Mm-hmm. But before we started having children, I actually did want a little girl. Like I always thought I would be a great father to a little girl. Mm-hmm. Um and then you ha- you start having boys, and you just keep on having boys, and the next one comes up, you're like, thank God it's not a girl, because I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, and then you, as you become an adult, an older adult, you realize all the problems that you have with girls, and like that you don't have with boys, and they're different, and I think there are more. So, I, 
I'm I'm sure the Lord would have blessed us with the graces we need not to damage little girls too bad. <laughs> uh, but I'm 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 glad I'm glad we had boys. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Here Whoa. is the controller. S- very similar. This, it hits, may, this hits different, Sam. <laughs> it may be a little bit is sort it? of different or spongy. The controllers may feel feel like as opposed to the last version. Um, yeah, it's a little more like. Uh, unsteady cam as you walk yeah yeah view bobbing is what that's called view bobbing yes i love that because it bobs your view view. Ooh, wait that's kind of freaky i'm looking down at a reflective surface where i can see the ceiling reflected but there's the parallax thing that happens Uh like is that what it's called well the the rays that it's generating haven't Mm -hmm. caught up with the um the frame rate oh no, no no what i meant is like the floor moves at a different rate than the ceiling oh yeah 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 that parallax and, effect yeah yeah and uh and there's a blur a motion blur in there mm-hmm. yeah that's freaky that's so there cool. are there are four sort of sections i just like doing this <laughs> <laughs> there four are sections. four sections on on each side two on each side um and i would recommend you go to section one first Okay. Where that's zone two. So gotcha. So go to zone one first. There you go. And Whoa. then yeah, there you teleported go. there. Oh. So okay. you can you can walk around and can I go and, no? Okay. Well that those are just blocks. No, that's back to the lobby. Ha ha <laughs> I discovered your game. Now I'm going in zone one again. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Um What was it like? What was the process of adopting Tristan? Okay, so we were able to adopt our son Tristan in um, a, a non-conventional way. I was a teacher in Swainsboro for a long time, for like fifteen years, and this. You can wonder turn, where this takes me. Turn left, and then <laughs> there's more. Um, and and so you end up teaching lots of people, and I, I taught these two sisters um, in my classes throughout the different years. I knew they had a younger brother who eventually made it to high school and I met him. I never had the chance to teach him, but he was in a club that I sponsored. <clears throat> and he was a band kid and he hung out with all these other good kids. Um, and so I, I knew of him and knew his situation a little bit in that he was at a local sheriff's home and there had been um, uh, negative family situations that had ended up him having to move around a lot and eventually being taken out of his mom's care and then eventually taken out of an aunt's care and lived in the sheriff's home. At the time, we were having trouble um, conceiving again, and we wanted more babies than what we had, and Mm -hmm. so we were looking into adopting. Uh, So he ended up at our house one day at a party for that club that I mentioned, the academic team, a Christmas party, and he was riding home with another kid that you could just tell they didn't really get along that well. And Sam, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Catherine, I do that all the time, get you guys mixed up. Uh, mm-hmm. Catherine asked, <laughs> what's the deal with so-and-so? Why did he go home with so-and-so? I said, oh. Oh, and the lady who picked them up was a black lady. Who, and both these are white guys. Uh-huh. So like it, it, none of it worked out Like in, a, in Catherine's mind. She's like, uh-huh. this, what's going on here? Um, and you could tell they weren't mixed race or anything. So... I said, oh, they both live at the sheriff's home. And the sheriff's home are generally for people who have been taken out of homes and are very long-term situations, oftentimes are up for foster care and adoption. And so we got into a long conversation about his situation and all that good stuff. Um, and as I said, we were thinking about adopting and maybe foster care. And so we really quickly got got to a point in the conversation where like is this god putting this kid in our path for this and so we started looking into that and as foster care slash adoption situations go it was a very easy road Mm -hmm. there were a couple of legal hurdles just because of it wasn't a the normal adoption situation there were um family member extended family members that had legal custody of him mm. that we were worried about their motives as to either holding on to him or letting him go and so we had to kind of overcome those we had we had a great great relationship with a local lawyer who's familiar with this kind of stuff and he worked with us very well and so within a year he was living in our home and within you know when once he turned 18 we officially adopted him 
Um, and he only came to live with us when he was 16. This whole process began when he was 15. So I guess that's a long way of saying it was really easy to adopt him. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we missed all the troubled years. He had a rough time of it in middle school. Mm. By the time he got to us in high school, he had leveled out. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten so lucky because the kid, he hung out with the best kids in the school and he wasn't on drugs and he didn't want to want to cause problems. He really wanted the best out of life and what life had to offer in the best possible way and um, has been a joy. So there. Awesome. He's now 26 and he's engaged to be married and he's pursuing a professional career and adjusting as needed in those respects. So he's doing great. You got engaged once. I did. Would you like to hear about it? I would love to. Tell me the story of, of you and so getting Catherine engaged. So Catherine and I met in church camp. I'm sure she gave she, you the lowdown yes, on that. Yes, the whole thing, yeah. We weren't attracted to each other at all. <laughs> I mean, she was obviously very attracted to me, but uh -huh. me not to her. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and we were just good buddies. And then years go by, and we both ended up in our third year of college, or my fourth year, her third year. I kind of wasted a year. Not really wasted, but it just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, at Georgia Southern University, we were both hanging out in the Baptist Student Union, and we we just glanced off each other, like we knew each other from church camp, and uh -huh. we just kind of ran in similar circles that were adjacent. So we'd find ourselves and get togethers and stuff, and we were just buddies. Um, and then one night, we were there was supposed to be this big get together. And nobody showed up. Everybody got confused about it. And somehow I ended up calling her. I'm going to set time to noon. Sounds good. Done. So then, oh, walk through the doors. It's now noon. It, it changes the way the light uh, uh, moves. It's no longer romantic light. It's like noon light. Yeah. Cool. Can I like jump up there? Can I jump on the shelves? Um, you are in creative, so you can double click A. That's... <laughs> That's the right trigger. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a plant in the brewing stand. I'm going to put a plant in that light right there. The brewing stand. Hold stands. on, watch this. Oh, wait. Press B. B is that one. Okay. Oh, okay. You can left or LT, left L trigger. L left trigger. See, that's what it does that every time. That goes into the brewing stand. What do you want to do? I don't know. What, what is that? I don't what does that mean? <laughs> Brewing stand. So, I know what that means in real life. So that is a... You know what? I'm what just going to walk around and talk. What you were looking at was a brewing stand. I don't care. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> where was I? Oh, we just ended up hanging out that night, and we talked till like 3 a.m., like literally 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. I mean, we played darts. We watched a movie. We went to Waffle House. It was just like a revelation. Mm-hmm. To each other, like how easily we converse with each other. Um, and so we started doing that, like on a semi-regular basis. And again, weren't attracted to each other at all. And um, eventually you just hang out with someone and you just fall in love, like just with her and how creative she was and smart and kind and all these great things. And I even dated some... <laughs> My brain just broke. This is a mirror room. Oh. So your your character, for some reason, doesn't exist. I was about to say. Um, But the doors In do. real life, I've been in plenty of mirror rooms, and I can always see myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and of course, I take my clothes off and just dance. <laughs> but <laughs> this is... This I'm not going to do that here in your podcast. Yeah. Uh, thank thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, this is this is the mirror room. I'm going to leave that plate. That's demonic. I'm just kidding. Facts. No, no demons in there. Except the ones you bring with you. Think about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, there are other doors. Let me go somewhere else. There, there's no, only two like, doors. Oh, suck. Okay, so we fell in love. I actually started dating this girl named Jill. Um, she told me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Jill was like, I thought you were into Catherine. I was like, nah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't You're find never. Catherine attractive. You're cute. Come here. Let's play kissy face. <laughs> and uh, that lasted for like literally a week before I realized, you know what? I'm into Catherine. <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I didn't really even realize that at the time. I just knew I really wasn't into Jill. And Jill was a lovely person. Mm -hmm. Like, like I genuinely valued our friendship, but I, this whole romantic thing wasn't there. <clears throat> and within about two weeks after that, I realized, you know what? I 
really, I, uh, like, I want to start something with Catherine because she is so great. Um, anyway, we gave him something to talk about. You know what I'm saying? We decided we were going out on a date for real Z. Whoa. Yep. Went to see Romeo and Juliet. That was actually before we started dating. Um, yeah. Okay. So, anyway. Our first movie, you know what our first movie is? was? Our first movie was Anastasia, the animated classic by DreamWorks Animation uh, about the um, doomed Russian princess. <laughs> she wasn't doomed in this story. <laughs> the Ah. But we weren't dating at the time. Uh-huh. We just went to it. As Jill, my girlfriend, stayed at our, my trailer and watched <laughs> something for a school project. I went to a movie with this other girl. S- smart. That's really it's smart crazy. It was the part. 90s, man. Yeah. yeah crazy stuff. And anyway, we started dating. And from then on, you know, it was fireworks. We just fell in love more deeper and deeper. And then I kind of let the cat out of the bag that I thought about becoming Catholic at some point. I'm going to give you the short version. Uh-huh. And uh, she thought I was a crazy person. And I gave her some stuff to read. And she came back like a week later after she disappeared and said, well, why aren't you Catholic if you actually believe all this? I was like, I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> and so we started reading together and getting excited. There were my roommate at the time, Aaron. He was becoming Catholic. He was going through RCIA. So we'd have these awesome conversations, the three of us, until like 3 a.m. And um, we all got excited about the faith. Her parents were not cool with it. So we waited until we got married and then became Catholic. But engagement is what you asked about. Yes. So yes. I made the decision. You know, for for a while, like I wasn't sure, like I was in love. You know, mm. and I tell you what did it. There was one spring break where we were away from each other for like a week, like a whole week. And after being with her like every day at school, like I just missed her. Like I missed her down deep, missed her. And I thought, oh, okay, this is what this is. <laughs> and at some point, it's kind of a douche move. Here's what I did. Um, I, I kind of got the feeling that, like, it, there was going to be trouble if I didn't drop the L-bomb at some point. Ah. And I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, say it, whether I think it or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a really smart move on your part. I know, right? Yeah. It worked out well, did it not? You're alive. That's, that's, that is a good, good so, point. So, Valentine's Day. Maybe ninety seven, ninety eight. I forget. I was doing I was doing lighting design because I was a, had a theater minor. I was doing lighting design for um, a play, uh, Two Gentlemen of Verona. Mm. No, Merchant of Venice. No, mm. take your time. It, it was Merchant of Venice. Okay. <clears throat> so the theater at um, Georgia Southern, the the old theater, not the new one. And so we had this Italian set on the theater. And so I printed up an invitation that said like romantic, or I didn't say romantic, but like Valentine's Day um, dinner theater and (laughs) had the address for the theater on Uh the invitation and sent it to her, right? And I made sure that no rehearsals were going on in the theater that night. Uh I set up a table and chairs on the stage, made the lights just right, where it was like cool lighting and everything. It was like dim enough, but it was it was romantic. I set out some candles and I had ordered food from this like the nicest Italian restaurant in town. <laughs> and had that all off to the side mm-hmm. and um was sitting there waiting for her on stage. On stage. On stage when nice. she uh at the time, the appropriate time that was on the invitation and I was all dressed up. So wait, did you send her the invitation? Yeah. Uh nice. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, and didn't mention it at all. And now she, you know, obviously she's yeah. going like, she's mom. She's she's going to dig. Right? Yeah. And so I played, you know, stupid. Oh, I don't know what that's about, <laughs> Kevin. What could it possibly be? Stop asking me questions and just do what the invitation says. <laughs> so she showed up and there I was. And um, I gave her, I don't know if it was Valentine's Day or not. It was some occasion. There was a, there was a used bookstore in town. Mm-hmm. And you know how your mama is about used she books. She's always been books. that way. Uh-huh. So I got her a copy of Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman mm. that was printed in like 1890 or something. Probably not. It's probably it was actually print in like printed 1840 on Leaves of Grass. Surprisingly, <laughs> that's right. It's a super tiny book. Yeah. Uh, anyway, on the inside, 
I wrote something, something, something. I love you. <gasps> no. And gave it to her at dinner. And then. Did you see her eyes just light up? There, yeah, it was like, she was a different person. She's like, you don't love me. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't like that at all. When we had a wonderful evening and um, I started saying it and then it became true. <laughs> I think it was true before that. I was just too dumb to realize it. Had you been in love before? That's a difficult question. I think so. Yes. Mm. Yes. All right. So I kind of fell in love with this girl named Avril Ward in high school. This okay. is actually a picture of her right here. Yeah. That's remarkable. <laughs> how she, she she had a leg in the front and the back. <laughs> she was green and had a sad face all the time. Do you know what this is? You can see what I'll, That's a creeper. Yes. Those things will explode, Sam. It's the most iconic thing in the history of Minecraft. They're filled with TNT. Oh, it's going to blow up. Look it, at that. It blew up. I hit different. Straight up. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of in love with her a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I I was I met this girl when I worked in Yellowstone that just kind of blew me away. Like, she's actually a pretty girl who found me attractive and was sweet and a Christian and was kind and... um. And I just kind of fell head over heels with her. Mm. Uh, we dated while I was out there. And then when we got back, we sort of dated the long distance for a while. Um, I, I flew out to visit her. And then she, right after I came back from that trip, she broke up with me over the phone. <gasps> yeah. So apparently she was not into it. Um, <laughs> and then I met your mom. I mean, you know, we started hanging out. Yeah. But before she was your mom. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, I feel like we've plumbed the depths here. Any any? Well, you never actually to told me how you asked her to marry you. Oh, okay. So I attended a, a youth camp called Living Waters outside of Brevard, North Carolina as a teen for a couple of years. And then I was a counselor there for a couple of years. And they had college retreats for a couple of years, and they were having a college retreat about the time I was thinking of popping the question. Mm. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone. I invited Catherine to go with me to this college retreat. I acquired an engagement ring, and um, I, I got a little silver box from a local antique store and lined the silver. I mean, it's a little silver box like this big, right? Like two mm. or two inches in diameter and um i lined it with rose petals like actual rose petals actual rose petals i glued wow. them in yeah uh -huh. and they kind of dry and they shrivel up a little bit but they're still kind of soft uh -huh. and uh but it was like the day before so they weren't too dried out and put the ring in there and um waited for the right moment outside of this this there's a waterfall area a little swimming hole and waterfall area called angel rock because it, you're sort of in in the inside of a bend in a mountain ridge where there is a waterfall and a watering hole. And we, we went to, to walk that afternoon, and we sat on the rocks, and I reached in and pulled out this little thing, and I got down on a knee, and I said, you will make me the luckiest man in the world if you, if you marry me. But not the happiest man. I could have said happiest. Maybe I said happiest. I don't Mom really would remember. know. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, you would. Were you were you scared? Yeah, my heart was pounding. Uh huh, pounding. Yes, wow. I felt so stupid doing it too. It's like this is so cliche. Uh you know, I thought about that recently. I was mm -hmm. like, it would seem like the type of thing that you would feel really cliche and really yeah, stupid and it, saying. and it didn't feel genuine. Like I wish there was a different set of words that I could have used. Like I wish I had. What's up, shorty? I'm just trying to. Shep, shorty, yo. You trying Yo, to you'd be up? busting respectful if you just <laughs> marry my butt. <laughs> um, yeah, that um, that makes sense. Um, and she said yes, by the way. Oh, really? But here's the deal. Okay, go ahead. She got the heads up that I was gonna ask her. Uh huh. And so it totally freaked her out. So she acted crazy the the whole like <laughs> trip there and while we were there, just weird mm -hmm. like she was like nervous weird on edge short fused like the people we were with were even like looking back they both knew that what i was gonna do and they were like 
Uh, it's not too late to back out, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> You know this girl crazy. You right? know this girl crazy, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Catherine, we thought Catherine was level, but she be crazy. She be tripping for real. Uh, so we, I say so too much. We got engaged. We came back. It's big to do. Everybody's happy for us. And then began the long trek to the wedding. We graduated college. Got married. Got a job. Lived in Statesboro for a year, lived in Savannah for two years, moved to Swainsboro, 15, and now I find ourselves here. Where'd you live in Statesboro? You don't know the place, but it's very close to, it's like if you know where the old Statesboro Hospital is and know where Statesboro Elementary is, it's like in between those two places. Because mm. I, I knew you lived in Savannah, mm -hmm. but I just thought it was just Savannah and it was It was a, like a... Like a like an old version Chester. neighborhood, you know. Go. Like when when here. I say neighborhood, you probably think like subdivision, like we live in now. Uh -huh. But no, think like inside a town neighborhood, like mm. similar, like we lived in Swainsboro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a neighborhood like that, mm. but it was a little duplex. So that's a that's a building that's divided in two, and you have two residencies on each side, mm -hmm. and we we occupied one of those. So like Barbara Jean, like the the house that she lived in with. Do you remember that one? Mm. Do you ever visit it? I don't think so. Huh. More like the one that Leela lived in in college. Did you visit that one? It's probably too too long ago. Anyway, it's just, it's an inner 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 town neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and those were good years. Uh, we went to the movies all the time, and we were um, youth group leaders at the local Catholic church. Mm. And they expected they'd wanted us to do no catechism. They just wanted us to have fun with the middle schoolers, <laughs> and we did, and it was great. <laughs> Wow. I I didn't realize that. That uh -huh. must have Imagine how cool we seemed to those middle schoolers. I know, we right? We're a young young married couple, we're becoming Catholic. I think we that's were, that's we one of funny. the obligations to being a, a youth minister as a young married couple. Yeah. Cuz it, it seems like it seems like any guy who's a a youth minister has to talk about how much he he's attracted to his wife. That's like an obligation of his. <laughs> Be like, my beautiful wife, who I am attracted to, and I kiss on the mouth. <laughs> I started to say gross, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, Speaking well, and gross. It's, a, it's a good model, you know? Uh -huh. Like, it's good for these kids to see young people who are happy together and still attractive and love each other. <laughs> Unlike all their parents who are just old and crusty now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is uh, another world that I I worked on. Um, there's you made like of, a spaceship. Yeah, when it turns to night, it looks like a spaceship. Um, but I will... So the viewers can't see what we're looking at. Or will they see what we're looking Spotify, at? On Spotify, you can upload a video too. So if you open it up, open do you Spotify. Do that? I do. So you but, take the and, time to do all that. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can see the video and on Spotify. And on any other service that supports it. Wait, wait, wait. But on YouTube, people can't see the gameplay. No, they can. Well, then why did you say Spotify? What What do you mean? I, explain to me what you're thinking right now. If any old person decides to view this, yes. they're going to go to YouTube. Yes. Well, when they're viewing this, can they see the gameplay? They can. Okay. Well, that's, then you should have said yes when I first asked. I question. thought you weren't specifically talking about the gameplay. I thought you were talking about just video in general oh no 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 no! stupid no the gameplay no so you're not stupid I'm just, if i wasn't clear like i listen to all my podcasts on spotify because i have spotify because i'm super cool yeah objectively i'm better um but if if i like i noticed this with the joe rogan podcast um i i listened to it and i just opened it and i was like oh there's a video there and when i'm when i was making this podcast for the first time uh it said like you can upload a video too and anywhere that doesn't support it we'll just have the audio so um gotcha it's pretty pretty nice i way. don't get video podcasts man i just don't get it because i don't want to sit around and watch stuff like i want to do stuff like i want to change the oil in my car i want to <laughs> build something in my shop i want to vacuum the floor mm -hmm. i want to blow leaves off in the yard you can't do that and watch something well the thing is that a lot of content is consumed like somebody will 
let's say I am scrolling through Instagram Reels or my YouTube homepage or TikTok, God forbid, and um, and then I happen upon a clip from a show like this one, then I will be like, oh, that's interesting. So then I'll I'll go to YouTube and watch the full thing on there, or I'll I'll be like. I'm gonna Which is where I fall off the wagon. I'm not I'm not the wagon. The whatever cart, whatever means of conveyance you are on right now, I am no longer well, on. Well, even even because I'm not gonna watch it at YouTube. Like I may like it's possible that if I see like the real, uh huh, you know, because let's say I'm looking up laser laser info at YouTube, uh-huh. right? And on the short shelf, some we pop up, mm-hmm. and I watch the clip, and at the end of the clip it says you know podcast so and so. Like then I might look up the podcast and my podcast aggregator, uh, Overcast is what I use. Then that may drive me as traffic to my podcast aggregator, but not to YouTube because I don't want to watch this. I don't want to watch this do this. Mm. I see. I want to blow leaves off in the yard. <laughs> I'm just as I'm listening. Well, the I that's what it sounds like. The the reason is that I I can have both. I can have like everything. Um, are you serious right now? Oh my gosh. The video stopped recording. When? Um, probably like a couple of minutes ago. Mm. But uh, I'll just toss up the gameplay instead. So, um, like it'll just be full gameplay on the video side after that. Oh, but you people will still hear us? Yes. So people are hearing me talk right now? Yes, but they're not seeing you. So I could I can take my pants off. All right, hold on. I'm st- I can still see you, Dad. That's okay. You've seen me take my pants off before. Dad, no! All right. Oh my gosh, it's disgusting! Ooh. Why are your legs so hairy? So much for Where are all the scratches from? It's cold in here. <laughs> Where are all the scratches from? <laughs> well, let's talk about your mom a little bit. <laughs> um, I feel like that's about all the time we have. I on. took my pants off for nothing. <laughs> I know. Let's talk about your mom a little bit. That's a anyway. It's another joke. Thank you for for being on the on the <laughs> podcast with me. Uh, this is thank this you for great. having me. This is You're listen, very welcome. This is better than what I thought it was going to be. Really? Well, yeah, not li- listen. No. I genuinely enjoy talking to you, uh-huh. like on a normal basis. So I was I was not not looking forward to this part, but the gameplay stuff. I was like, ugh. Tell me. I knew I, knew I wasn't going to be able to do it. So tell me what you were expecting. You just you thought we would sit down. And me try to talk while I do the gameplay. Mm. And instead, what happened is I just forgot about playing the game and was just talking to you. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Because I can't, you can't do this game. I'm telling you, man, this is, this, you'll see. Even with super smart people, <laughs> you can Father Ben in here to try to do this. Uh-huh. Same thing's going to happen. He's not going to be able, he's going to go quiet whenever he's actually trying to do something. There, there are these boots that I have, these ones right here. Um, that I've I've made these commands that when I when I put them on, I go super fast. <laughs> but my Sweet. arm looks really goofy. Fast as metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the boots of the gods. Um, but yeah, these are a bunch of command blocks that do that. It's it's not you. It's not okay. Right. You were telling me how much you enjoyed having me. I did. And I'm the greatest dad ever. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I look forward to seeing where this where this show goes. Me too. All right. Peace out, homies. <laughs>